You know, I've always been a Christian. My parents, they were Christian. Their parents were Christian. We went to church every Sunday, or we went to church pretty often. So I've just always been a Christian. But how do I know that I'm actually saved? If that's your story, or maybe you've been a Christian, or you just, you don't know if you have truly been saved, and you have that question today, and you're asking, am I really saved? Then great, let me tell you a story. Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. Now personally, I grew up in Georgia and in Tennessee, so I grew up in like the belt buckle of the Bible belt. Everyone around me is Christian, right? And all my life, I would have told you that I was a Christian. If you had asked, if it had been a checkbox on a piece of paper, I would have checked Christian every single time. Now with that said, I was in an accident at the age of 17. Uh, My girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, I was taking her home just around the corner. We had a drunk driver hit his head on doing 80 miles an hour while the speed limit was 30. And I can tell you, I know for a fact today that had I died, Jeff Evans, the guy who would have claimed I am a Christian, I'd have checked that box every single time. If I had died that day, I would have went to hell. I can promise you that. You see, because although I said I was a Christian, although I claimed I was a Christian, although I wore that title, I never followed the one it was about, right? I said that I was a Christian, but that claim, that following, that one that I said I was a part of, he never influenced my life. I was a Christian, but I wasn't a follower of Jesus. And there's a difference. And I think that's a sad truth for a lot of us. Now guys, I do apologize. I know if you watched last week's video, I promised I would be talking on the proof of the resurrection and that was my full intention. However, I taught on the subject inadvertently on Wednesday night to my students and I just seen a a crazy response. Um, Students responding to the gospel, making decisions. It was just an amazing response. And whenever I got here this morning and started to prepare this video, I just felt like God was leading me more in the direction of ask your followers, ask the world, How do you know if you are truly saved? Because I think it's a question a lot of us have, especially for those who grew up in a a Christian culture where it would be weird to be anything else and we were kind of peer pressured into claiming Christianity without ever accepting Jesus, right? So I wanna talk to you guys today about what it truly means to be saved and how you can have assurance of your salvation that when you die, you will enter into heaven, into the pearly gates, although I don't believe that's what Christianity is about. But that will be a video for a different time. As of right now, we're gonna talk about how do I know I am truly saved? And the best way I know to answer any biblical question is to go to the Bible. So let's see what the Bible has to say about salvation. Specifically, what's the Bible say about how to be saved? In Romans 10, 9, it says this, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And then we all go, Oh yeah, it's good. Preach it, preacher. Preach it, preacher. Because what we just heard to our Americanized, Westernized ears is if you say Jesus is God, you're good. The passage says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Let's not westernize that word. It is the word Lord. In this context, yes, Jesus is divine, but we're not simply thinking of it as God. In this context, this word would have meant master. If we make Jesus master, that is in a master-slave relationship. If you make Jesus master of your life, do not westernize the word Lord here. He is saying, if you make Jesus Lord or master over your life, and then you believe in your heart that he was raised from the grave, then you will be saved. But too many of us say, I believe Jesus is God, well, that's, that's all well and good, but is he master over your life? 
is he master over your life? And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that someone who simply had a spiritual experience is not saved. I'm saying that I look in the Bible and I don't see anyone who has been saved who is a follower of Jesus that doesn't change their ways. That I believe when we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ, our lives will change. In fact, I read it in 1 Thessalonians 1, 4, and 5, Paul says this, For we know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that He has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. Understand that. Another way we know we will be saved is if we've had the Holy Spirit come upon us, and that may not necessarily look like tongues or any other spiritual gifts that kind of been Holy Spiritualized, but that we've had that feeling, we've had that experience, we've had that God descending and we felt something deep inside our core that we can't quite explain, but then that is also followed by deep conviction. Deep conviction. Understand that. It's not just good music at a worship concert. It's that the Holy Spirit comes on you, that you feel something inside of you and you are convicted. I do not see a single person in scripture that decides to follow Jesus and they're not convicted to change their lives. You see, I believe, and I've told you a thousand times on this channel, Jesus wants you where you are. But I can promise you, when he comes into your life, you won't stay there. Because no one follows Jesus without changing their ways. That is simply a promise of scripture. If you wanna know you're saved, ask yourself this question. Have I prayed to receive Jesus as Lord, not as God, not as Savior? Have you received him as master of your life? Do you believe that he died for your sins and resurrected on the third day by the power of the Father? Do you believe those things and have you proclaimed that Jesus is Lord and master of your life? And has your life changed since you prayed that prayer? I think those are the two testaments to know if we are truly saved. Now, for each and every one of us, the situation is gonna be unique because God has made each and every one of us unique. But I think that is a good basis. Have I prayed to make Jesus master of my life? Do I believe that he was the son of God, that he resurrected from the grave and he died for my sins? And have I changed my life to actually follow him? We notice in scripture, we notice in the gospels when Jesus calls someone, when he comes and he calls Simon Peter, and he calls Nathaniel, and he calls Philip, he never says, come be a Christian. He says, come follow me. Now, if this video wasn't already going a little bit long, I would go into the depth of that statement on what it meant to come follow me, what it would have meant for a Jewish rabbi to say that to Jewish men, to come follow me. It wasn't simply, hey, follow me to this place I'm going. It's come do everything I do, follow my ways, follow my will, follow my orders. It meant a whole lot more than, hey, follow me to Jerusalem. Come on, let's go on a walk. It meant come and be me. So how do we know we're saved? You're not gonna be perfect. I promise you, you won't be. You'll still sin, you'll still mess up, you'll feel guilty, you'll fall to temptation. That's gonna happen. But you'll feel convicted about it. So ask yourself these three questions as this video concludes. Ask yourself, have I accepted Jesus as Lord and Master of my life? Have I simply given him my entire life? Has my life and my decisions, my words, and my actions changed because of that? I think that's the way we're gonna be able to look into our own lives and say, yes, I am saved. I am confident that I have salvation because Jesus has changed my life. And I can tell you that growing up agnostic and becoming Christian, Jesus has completely flipped and changed my life upside down that he has completely changed my life. And still, there are times where I question if I'm truly following God the best that I can with everything I can. I truly question that sometimes. We are not all perfect and we're all gonna mess up. That doesn't mean you're not saved. My question is, do you feel convicted from those mistakes? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins and that he resurrected from the grave? Now, if your answer is, is no, or Jeff, I'm truly not sure, that's okay. You don't have to be sitting in a church pew to make that decision. You don't have to hear amazing worship music with fog and, and laser beams and 
stuff going everywhere. You can make that decision sitting in your computer chair or on your phone in your bed right now. You can say, today, yeah, I want to make Jesus the Lord or the master of my life. Jeff, today, I want to I want to follow Jesus. I want to give Jesus my entire life. And then you, you simply close your eyes and you speak to God because He is there, He is present, He is listening. And you speak to Him and you say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Today, on this very day that I'm watching this video of this strange dude on YouTube, on this day, I accept you as master of my life. Jesus, today I give you all of me. And you simply, you pray that prayer to God and you say, I believe you are the Son of God, that you died for my sins and for my transgressions. God, that you died for me and that you were resurrected on the third day. And God, today, on this day, I will never be the same because today, on this very day, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna serve you and you only. And if you prayed that prayer, and if you meant it in your heart, and you feel the conviction for the things you have done, and you've accepted Jesus as Lord, I believe today you are saved. I believe today that Jesus Christ has saved you, and that tomorrow will not be the same, and next week will not be the same, and next year will not be the same, because you are now a different person. Now, I believe there are steps to take. Right now, at this moment, close down this video, start praying. Say, Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you for the changes you've made in my life. Jesus, today I give you all of me. I'll never be the same. Because it's no longer I that live, but you in me. And I pray that you pray that prayer and that you truly mean it and your life will never be the same. That's my prayer today. I hope that's helped you. I hope that's either led you to pray that prayer or it's gave you assurance that you are truly saved. And if that is you and you are truly saved, your work is not over. Because when we are saved, he makes us a fisher of men. That is now our job to go find others who aren't saved. And I promise there's some in your very life that don't know Jesus, that haven't accepted Jesus, that don't accept Christianity as truth. And it is now your responsibility as a Christian and a follower of Jesus, remember, a follower of Jesus actually does the thing Jesus does. And Jesus went and he changed lives. It is now our calling, it is now our duty to find others who don't believe and lead them to Jesus. It is our duty to live as though Jesus is the only one who matters. One of my favorite football players, Carson Wentz, has a ministry called Audience of One. And just every time I'm feeling nervous, every time I see someone and I want to give them, you know, a church card or I, I want to just ask them if they know Jesus, if I want to enter into that and I'm feeling nervous and it just it feels weird inside and I don't want to do this, it's going to be awkward. I remember that I'm performing, I'm living for an audience of one. And what he thinks about me is the only thing that matters. That embarrassment, that awkwardness, it'll go away. But am I doing all I can to serve Jesus? That's all I got for you today. I pray that it spoke to you. I pray that you either have assurance or now you have conviction. Love you guys. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, I release content just like this every single Friday. I also do a shorter version of this on Tuesdays called Two Minute Tuesdays. If you enjoyed this, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below letting me know if this video spoke to you, if it gave you assurance, or if it gave you conviction. And if during this video you accepted Jesus as your Lord for the very first time, I would love if you would comment down below, but if you don't want to, send me a message. I would love to know that. All right, guys, love you. Keep living that bold life.